Hi guys, Brother Mike here again. Hope you're all doing well. I just wanted to cover a few verses in Colossians, uh, Colossians 2. Um, the world often would put a demand on believers. Um, and this is usually the institutional churches or the religious denominations. Um, they tell you that in order to walk in the Spirit, you have to be turning from your sins. But that's not what Scripture tells us. Walking in the Spirit is not turning from your sins. Turning from your sins is an attempt to follow the law. Um, that comes from 1 John 3-4, to 4, transgression of the law is sin. Therefore, turning from my sins would, in essence, be telling me to keep the law in entirety. That's not walking in the Spirit. The Spirit doesn't allow or point to the law for justification, for righteousness. The Spirit always points to Jesus Christ and His finished work as our source of righteousness. Our justification is Christ Himself. Colossians 2.6 As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in Him. Okay? We have received Christ the moment we believed the Gospel. The moment we trusted in His death, burial, and resurrection on the third day for our salvation. It is through His shed blood that we have peace with the Father. And that is how we walk in Christ, walk in the Spirit, the same way we have received the Spirit. By faith. Reminding ourselves of who we are, sons and daughters of God, through Christ Jesus our Lord. Reminding ourselves that it is through His shed blood that we have peace with the Father. Reminding ourselves of the good news, the gospel, the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ that has brought us peace with the Father and reconciled us who were once enemies, alienated from God, but through Christ have become sons and daughters, His children, born of His own Spirit, washed in His own blood. See, the religious world will have you turn from your sins because that is what they can see. They tell you that that is walking in the Spirit, but it is nothing, nothing more than self-righteousness, religiosity, and attempts to keep the law. It may look right to a man, However, what seems right to a man are often the ways of death, and man was never justified by the law. The law only served to condemn us, to show us that we were guilty under it, and that we needed a Savior. You see, everything points to Jesus Christ. Everything. The entire Bible points to Jesus Christ as our source of righteousness, our justification, our sanctification, our Redeemer, and our Messiah. As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in Him, rooted and built up in Him, and established in the faith, as ye have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. It goes on to say, Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit, after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. It's simply right there. Okay? Man will often spoil or lead believers astray, telling them they have to keep the law, they have to stop sinning in order to be walking in the Spirit, the rudiments of the world, the law. You know, being a good person doing such and sh such and such, so and so. And then, you know, when they've satisfied whoever is watching, then maybe then 
they'll be walking in the spirit, but that is not the case. Okay? We are complete in Christ, for in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And ye are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power. There's nothing more to add. And indeed, we can't add anything else to the finished work of Jesus Christ. We can simply rest in him in the full assurance of joy that the Lord is faithful. It's right there. In Christ dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. We are, as believers, complete in him. Lacking without him, complete in him. Complete denoting that we can add nothing, nothing more to the finished work of Jesus Christ. God gets all the glory. In whom also ye are circumcised, with a circumcision made without hands, in putting off the body of the sins of the flesh. Get this, not by turning from your sins, not by stopping sinning, but by the circumcision of Christ. It is salvation, putting off the sins of the flesh, the separation of dead flesh from born-again spirit is the operation of God. The circumcision of Christ. Again, nothing we did, nothing we can do. Turning from your sins doesn't solve anything. Turning from your sins isn't walking in the Spirit. Turning from your sins indeed can't be done in carnal, sinful, and corrupted, dead flesh. Okay? There's only one way that the sins of the flesh, the flesh was circumcised from the Spirit, that is, by the circumcision of Christ, buried with him in baptism, wherein also ye are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God, who has raised him from the dead. You see? It's all Jesus Christ. It's all... It's all God, the operation of God, the entire work is of God. Okay? Nothing that we can do. I think that goes even further. And you being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, has he quickened together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses. Okay? When we were dead in our sins and the uncircumcision of our flesh, could we, and this is an, a question for those who, who maintain that you have to turn from your sins to be saved or to stay saved, can we circumcise our own flesh? No. Impossible. Salvation, an unseen spiritual circumcision done without hands. This is spiritual. This is not attainable by any one of us. We give God all the glory and all the thanksgiving for what he has done. And all we need to do is trust that he's done that, that his word is true that his testimony of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ for our justification, the gospel, is true. And the moment we believe that, he covers us with his own righteousness, circumcises us, remember, a spiritual circumcision, circumcises us from the sins of the flesh, the dead flesh, and we are born again of his own spirit. Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. Amen. So you see, it is all Jesus Christ. It is all the work of God. It is his finished redemptive work. That saves. Right? 
and having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. Okay. That's another thing man could never have done. But anyway, I hope this has blessed you. I hope this has encouraged you. Um, believers, church, brothers and sisters in Christ, rest assured, we are complete in Jesus Christ. He is the head of the entire church. We lack nothing. Ignore those who tell you that you need to do works, that you need to do something more, that you need to do your own part. No. We are in Christ Jesus, our Lord. All right? God bless you. Thank you for listening.